a premium design, gorgeous ultra-wide resolution, super smooth 100Hz, and FreeSync support, all at $799 US dollars seems like a great deal. But with a terrible stand, lack of VESA mounting, some minor FreeSync flickering, and pixel inversion issues, keep it far from perfect. Hi, I'm David, and this is the ASUS MX34 VQ monitor. So on paper, there's a lot to like about this monitor. With a 34-inch diagonal running at 3440 by 1440 that's about 110 pixels per inch, which I find just about perfect for productivity in web browsing without any need for scaling. The panel has a native 100Hz refresh rate with FreeSync support between 48 and 100Hz, which makes it great for smooth and responsive gameplay, but I'll touch on that more later. This monitor is using a Samsung VA panel, which comes with the typical benefits and disadvantages over an IPS or TN panel. But quickly comparing to my Dell Ultrawide that uses an IPS panel, I find the colors pretty comparable between the two. Viewing angles on the SUS monitor are definitely not as good as color shift as you move off angle. The blacks on the SUS are really nice and dark and have very little glow or light bleed, but it does tend to crush some of the blacks, so you do lose some shadow details. And finally, reading text or web pages on both monitors is nice, but it's just a little smoother on the Dell IPS panel. The physical design for the monitor looks really classy and premium. It has a near frameless design on the top and sides with very small bezels and uses a silver and black plastic frame throughout the construction. The display has an 1800R curved radius, which is nice for wrapping around your vision and has a light matte finish on screen that's good with glare and clarity. The base of the stand also has a built-in Qi charger, which is nice if you have any devices with wireless charging support. One of the biggest flaws with this monitor is the stand. It only supports a tilting adjustment. It stands very short at 46cm from the base to the top of the monitor. Also there are no VESA mounting holes, so you can't easily swap out for a new stand. So most people will need to put this on a lift to get proper ergonomics. The monitor is powered by an external power brick, so there is some extra cable management to consider, and for display connectors, there are three HDMI 2.0 connectors, and just one display port connector that I'm using for all my testing. Another nice feature with this monitor are the Harman Kardon built-in speakers, and these are probably one of the best speakers I've heard on a monitor and are very usable, but they don't have enough clarity to completely replace a decent set of dedicated speakers. By default, they have an auto sleep function that kicks in after 2 seconds of no sound and takes about half a second to auto turn back on, which gets annoying between song tracks, so I recommend turning that feature off. Also if you're in a quiet environment and sensitive to buzzing or electric wine noises like I am, the speakers emit a faint buzzing noise, so just turn off the speakers completely if that bothers you. Controls on the OSD for the monitor are simple and easy to use with a power button, joystick, and shortcut button under the display. Most of the options are pretty standard, so I'll just walk through them on screen. But a nice feature that this monitor has is the Game Plus FPS counter, that doesn't show traditional FPS like Fraps does, but instead shows the monitor's current refresh rate that's useful for checking if FreeSync is working. So next let's talk about gaming on this monitor, and that's a big appeal for this ASUS model over something like my existing Dell Ultrawide. With a native 100Hz refresh rate, gameplay feels really smooth and highly responsive. I find high refresh rate monitors like this ASUS are definitely worth the premium if gaming is the main purpose for the monitor. And the mix between high refresh rate and high ultrawide resolution means it looks and feels great whether you're playing a fast paced twitch shooter or a slow paced RPG. This monitor also supports FreeSync with a range of 48 to 100Hz, which really helps with the smoothness and tear-free experience while gaming. But there is some flickering on screen once you hit the 50fps range as the FreeSync LFR feature starts kicking in, and the display irregularly switches between 50 and 100Hz. But this is a pretty normal artifact due to brightness differences between low and high refresh rates on these monitors. In these cases where my R9390X GPU is unable to keep up, I feel it's worth dropping my resolution down to get a higher FPS for a better gaming experience, and completely avoiding this flickering. Oddly, this display doesn't natively have built-in support for these intermediate resolutions, but can easily be added through a custom resolution utility or in the AMD driver. Overall gaming on this monitor feels great. The FreeSync flickering can be annoying as it pops up in some menus and cutscenes, 
but even if I turn FreeSync off, I enjoy the benefits of the higher refresh rate, so I'll continue to appreciate this monitor, even if I ever get an NVIDIA GPU. The last thing I want to cover are some pixel inversion issues with this monitor. Most people won't really notice this issue during typical usage, but when you have fine checkerboard patterns on screen, you can start seeing some artifacts, some of which can cause minor grain patterns and brightness changes to full blown out bleeding across the screen. Again, for the vast majority of people, you'll probably rarely encounter this problem, but apparently it pops up on most high refresh rate monitors, so it's good to be aware of if it occurs. So that's the SUS MX34 VQ monitor. The ultra wide resolution combined with a high 100Hz refresh rate and FreeSync all work together to create one of the best gaming experiences without a huge price premium. Sure, there are flaws with this monitor, but if you can overlook them, you'll be left with a gaming experience that you can never go back from. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one, you know what to do, and I'll see you in the next video.